Hey everyone. Before we get into this week's book tour, I wanted to make a quick announcement. I have a game out! All Our Yesterdays is my first tabletop role-playing game. It's a solo journaling game about traveling back in time to bear witness to the last moments of someone's life. I know, real cheery stuff. If you're interested in checking it out, All Our Yesterdays is available right now for pay what you want on my itch hbbisniex.itch.io. This game means a whole, whole lot to me, and if it sounds like something that you might be into, I hope you check it out. Anyway, on with the show. Warning! This episode contains some strong language. Listener discretion is advised. excited to welcome the author of the Tensorate series and all-around amazing person, Neon Yang. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's like, I always say, you know, it's such a joy to have people on. It's like, literally, like, so exciting for me to have you on. I've been following your career for years now and it's like oh i can actually just like talk to them and say do you want to be on a podcast <laughs> yes yes i am real i'm a person i am here hello hello <laughs> uh you are real you're a person you are like we have lots of mutuals you know you uh uh yeah authors are real people too and podcasters as well yes it's wonderful. Uh, it's a wonderful world we live in. It is. It really is. Uh, so we're here today to talk about your brand new queer mecha book, The Genesis of Misery. Is there anything we need to know about the book before we get into a little bit of the reading? Um, it's basically a... It started off as a retelling of the Joan of Arc story, and in many ways it still is. Um but yes. it also ended up being like a commentary like on like belief and truth and and which developed as a as I wrote the book and I I kind of always pitch it as like um it's Joan of Arc's story but if she was a Gundam pilot um we love to hear it accurate and also kind of like not really we'll see <laughs> <laughs> uh well as somebody who is consuming a lot of mecha media right now that is about lots of things besides just being in cool robots uh i'm so <laughs> excited for this book yeah i'm glad <laughs> <laughs> uh so you're going to be reading out of uh very close to the beginning is there any uh setup we need um well i am reading basically from where the plot more or less begins so you know the, i will be giving you the experience that you would more or less get when you start reading the book which is out in september at the end of the month hooray so this month <laughs> by the time you're listening to po podcasts yes yes okay. time is fake who knows how it works but uh listeners if you're listening to this as it came out look forward to this book it's coming out very soon yeah okay so uh, we're going to start um, by following the protagonist misery um, as they are about to um, break out of jail and also um, you'll notice that I use they pronouns for misery but um, in, in the text of the book she uses she a lot as well because mm -hmm. she uses both pronouns and there's actually an explanation that's like in the text in the book like why that happens oh but nice just so you're not confused um that's that's what's going on because like that bit doesn't come in until 100 yeah. pages later like 100 that's fair. <laughs> we right. love and support a she they king yeah 
In a steel walled room and sister in the capital's guts, the last savior of the faithful is trying to turn a door to jelly. Misery mm -hmm. Nomaki, chosen of the forge, presses herself against the flat, glossy surface, cold as dead marble, and says, I'm the fuck on. The door is holy stone. It whispers to her with the electric, back of the neck prickle that holy stone always has. She's never seen this sword before, a pale gray streaked with white, only pretty because it shines. And she's always wary of strange holy stone. No fucking idea what it's called. No fucking <laughs> idea what it does. But 10 minutes ago, she watched the flint of its striped surface turn to gelatinous and admit a young saint, bearing a crate of dinner, breaking over and sliding over her like liquid. Of course, that's how she got in this box to begin with. The self they put in her is still flossing her mind, muddying emotion and memory, smearing adrenaline into a soggy mush of apathy. It's hard to think when the cells get her like this. If she had known, she would have never accepted the dose. But then she's been saying yes to a lot of shit she shouldn't lately. Hmm. She doesn't know what's on the other side of this door. Guards, probably. Trouble. More trouble than what she's doing in right now. Not anything's better than sitting on her ass and waiting for the emperor, or whoever, to pass judgment down. She, she didn't sign up for any of this. <laughs> and she certainly didn't sign up to be thrown in a cell with zero cause upon arrival in the imperial capital. Hmm. Misery has no idea where her sponsor, the Duke, is right now. For all she knows, he's in a lockbox too. And whatever's coming next, if she waits for it, it's probably worse than what it is right now. Hmm. It's better to find your own trouble than to have trouble come find you. Misery closes her eyes to focus better. There's a familiar twinge she's looking for, a fire in her nerves that tells her when she's woken the holy stone. These rocks are full of surprises, pixie bastards. Some invert gravity, some power the hearts of starships, yet others can destroy everything in their path. This holy stone is ostensibly a doorway, but who knows what configurations lurk in its lightless depth. Hmm. Won't be the first time Misery wakes some void touched ability in Holy Stone that's brand new. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Slouched against the door is a delusion in human shape. A youth with every trapping of a classical soft lad. Milk fleshed and bird boned, icy bangs framing a highbrow and jutting cheeks. And her eyes. Cosmic presence radiates from the hollow of those sockets. Sometimes they go bright as suns. Sometimes they fall dark as the void between stars. She's mm. dressed in the kind of loose off-shoulder blanket dress worn by angels in art from the source world, ending above the knee and displaying a generous swathe of skin and nipple. <laughs> Unreadable symbols crawl over one bare shoulder, fluid and sinuous. This delusion declaims the name. Ruin. No known pronouns. Bane of misery's life. Absolute bane. Showed up bright and inescapable a couple of weeks ago. All beautiful and haloed, claiming a grand destiny for her. Just like her dead mother promised. Break into the local defensive base, he said. Steal a Sparrowhawk unit and take off with it, he said. Fight the heretics lurking over the nowhere-nothing mining colony you call a home, he said. It is what the Larix Forge calls you to. Because Misery's stupid, because she's got void where a brain should be, because it was her birthday and also Mother's Death anniversary and she was completely smashed on dirty cells, because she was still pissed at her older brother for some bullshit, he said. Because of all of that, Misery said, fuck it, and did as Ruin suggested. <laughs> Even though she knew better. Even though she knew she should have recognized Ruin for what the delusion Z is. Even though she knew the consequences of not resisting the void sickness that generated the delusion, she did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And so here she is, a prisoner, halfway across the galaxy, on the capital at the center of it all, trapped with an advanced outgrowth of the void madness she was born with. It took 20 years to show up, but she's finally full-on hallucinating the way Mother used to. 
arguing with shades like old family members. Good job, misery. <laughs> Everything going cherries and honey. Ruin slugs her head in curiosity. You wanted a wood stone? You wanted to leave home for shinier pastures? I did that for you. Did I not? If I wanted to be imprisoned on the imperial capital, I would have found better ways, Ms. Snap. You can't hear the holy stone through all this nagging. Can't believe she sat through thousands of hours of sermon and not one second of it covered getting a box aspect of the universal force. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Tell me again, says Ruin, clearly with the least inclination in the void to shut the fuck up. <laughs> what good would escaping this room do? Where do you imagine you will go? Somewhere not here, Misery says, and still to self because a thread has come loose in a holy stone, rushing against her senses like a questing finger. She can deal with ruin later. Freedom waits. Breath held, she tugs upon the offered filament, shuts her eyes, shuts out the rest of the universe. Her existence is stone and stone only. Beneath her, the essence of the strange mineral slowly unravels, loosening its grip on the divine gift that separates it from mere rock. The holy stone melts, and misery melts along with it, her body turning to jelly, bones and skin and all. She has no body. That brick of flesh right now has no owner. She is the stone, and the stone is she. The holy stone activates and misery falls through it, plowing through gel thicker than her head, finding nothing but air on the other side. She tumbles onto her hands and knees, well up to back into her body with an angry smack that shoots up the bone. The epitome of grace makes misery no mockery. She swears a little because she has the mouth for it now. After thousands of melts with holy stone, misery still gets rustled by the out of body transitions every time. Ruin stands in the middle of the outside passageway. Arms folded, brows knitted, lips thin. Z doesn't need to walk, blinking in and out of places like a photon, and misery could wring her neck for it. Can one strangle a delusion? <laughs> misery hasn't yet managed to lay a hand on Ruin. Z moves too fast, flitting out of reach every time she gets close. Of course. Z says, turn back. Return to the room you were in. Not a room, a cell. And you can't tell me what to do if you're not my mm. brother. You will regret continuing upon this path. Great. Add it to my regrets, Paul. She dusts herself off and takes stock. She's made it up? Good. She hasn't set off a siren. Even better. Some time to think. And that's it. <laughs> that's the, that's the answer. <laughs> I love this. I love this. I'm so even more excited for this book now. Um, Thank you. It's uh, your your characters always have this just amazing attitude to them uh, <laughs> that uh, it just like it's. I don't I I can't describe it which is bad cuz I'm supposed to describe things cuz I'm a writer <laughs> and a podcaster. I, I can tell you what it is. It's a coping mechanism because my characters are all like really fucked up on the inside so they have like attitude to mm -hmm. kind of pretend that they're not falling apart on the inside. So that's 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 just a mood. <laughs> that's such a mood. <laughs> um yeah. No, the the like it's deeply, deeply relatable. Yeah, yeah. I put a lot of myself into my characters. What can I say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. So, uh, because this is Tales from the Trunk, uh, I'm <laughs> I'm obligated to ask: Is there any part of this book that you have that's like a favorite bit that just, for whatever reason, didn't end up making it into the final copy? That's an interesting question in terms of this book, because the book that's coming out is actually, I think, something like the fourth iteration of the novel. Um, I had a very difficult sort of like birthing process with this book. Um, mm -hmm. 
because I had to, I rewrote it from scratch like four times. Woof. Three, more, more like three times. It's three, maybe three and a half because there were there were like rounds of like you know edits where I would throw out half the book, mm -hmm. rewrite those bits. But um, the original like draft, the first one that I wrote that I sent to my agent was in a different tense. <sighs> and the protagonist had a different name. Oh, was, did the protagonist have a different name at some point? Was she, were they already misery? <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, the, the book's been through a lot. So I that's, feel yeah, like that's a lot. because I did so much pruning and redoing over and over again, all my favorite bits are actually in the book because I cut out everything that wasn't working. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, um, yeah, that, uh, like you're the the second person I've had on this year who said, oh yeah, I, I had to like rewrite this book like three times. Uh, mm -hmm. Sarah That's Gailey uh, yeah. said similar things about uh, their newest book, Just Like Home, which, uh, you know, if, if rewriting a book three or four times is what it takes <laughs> to get it to be amazing, then I'm, you know... I'm yeah. here for it, knowing that that is a curse I have now li wished upon myself. Yeah, sometimes books just do be like that. <laughs> <laughs> they just do yeah. be like that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Sarah and I share an agent, so they're very, they're very patient agent. While we like sit there and churn through book after book, being like, "No, it's not right yet." No. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I everything I've heard about Dongwan, like their just a very uh straightforward and also very patient and and caring agent to have and i'm i'm you know very yeah. glad that they're in the world and have helped usher all of these amazing books into the world yeah they are a very good agent <laughs> particularly <laughs> for someone like me who needs like a lot of like reassurance and and, and time yeah mm -hmm. that they're my agent <laughs> Dongwon, call me. <laughs> I'll pass it on. <laughs> uh, so now that we've gotten the trunked part out of the way, without going into too many spoilers, do you have a favorite part of this book uh, that did make it into the final version? Uh, any part that like you're really excited for people to get to? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm like... I. I was not kidding when I was saying like all my favorite bits are in the book because like the book is just like made out of all my favorite bits like glued nice. together. Um, and I'm just like, ooh, what's the exciting? What are the really exciting bits? Um, there are a number of like twists in the book, and I hope that people are like excited when or like upset when they get to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to explain that would be spoilery. So I was just saying there are bits in the book where I'm like, <laughs> 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 um, I'm here for that. Yeah. Uh, um, as, as somebody I've... who one of my primary ways of consuming media is to mm. jump into somebody's DMs and yell at them about it. <laughs> like, please very... do you. Please do Very jump into my DMs and, and yell up at, at me about things when you actually read this book. I would love that. <laughs> I, I, you have my word. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, I, I, uh, so I, I mentioned earlier that I've been consuming a lot of, uh, mecha media and one of the, uh, one of the media properties that I've been, uh, into a lot recently is the uh me and one of my friends have been uh she's been like six or seven episodes behind me but listening to the uh partisan arc of friends at the table which is you know mm -hmm. far future mecca but very queer and communist and you know <laughs> so it's like you know it's yeah sure wow cool robot but mostly like you know, it's the stuff that 
happens outside of the robots and that's happening inside yes. the heads of the pilots and all these things. Uh, uh, yes. And, like, that's the best part about mecha anime and mecha media in general is, like, it's, yes. yeah, sure, cool robot, but, like, there's so much else in it. Yeah, it's, it's the cool robot is the thing around which the plot is, like, the structure in the middle of like the cotton candy and then the rest mm -hmm. of it, the actual snack is the the sugar of like bullshit and trauma mm -hmm. and body ish you know body issues and horror that surrounds the central piece mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and i think that's kind of what, like what it is with these, this book because like the 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 mecca in the book in 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 this book even though i i i i, I do say that it's a mecca book it's like the mecca are just tools they're there um mm -hmm. to, like be nice. folds for what the characters are doing <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah 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 and i mean Not also like cool robot. yeah yeah like you said like Robots are just about bodies, like yeah, yeah, a lot. And, of, and you know what? What's yeah. more queer than having uh, metaphors for bodies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So now that I've made my contractually obligated plug for friends at the table for this episode, <laughs> uh, is there anything that you've been listening to, watching, reading, playing that uh, you're really you've been really into, and you're uh, excited to get other people into as well, so you can yell at them about it? Oh my god, um, this is this is going to be really terrible, but like my brain is so, um, my brain is so clogged up right now. Is the way that I can best describe it. It's it's tired and so like my like one media distraction aside from like dumb cooking shows on netflix is monster hunter which is a oh, game where yeah. you turn your brain off take up a really big weapon and use it to hit even bigger monsters and i would love for everyone i know to actually play the game so that i have people to co-op with <laughs> mm -hmm. like my sorry ass alone <laughs> trying not to get beat up by the monster boy uh-huh um, but that, yeah, there, there's like no plot, nothing whatsoever. It's just you beating up monsters, making stuff out of the monsters you beat up, rinse and repeat. <laughs> I mean, flawless. It's it's cathartic, I shall say. It's cathartic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I just picked up uh, Devil May Cry, the ah. PS2 game, uh -huh. for the first time in like a decade. Yeah. Because it was on sale on Switch, and I was like, oh yeah. This game is, like, really hard, for me at least, but <laughs> it's also really stupid, and I just, like, hit monsters into the air with my sword and then shoot them with a big gun. What could be yeah. better? That, that's basically, that. that is also basically Monster Hunter. No, they're both Capcom, com, aren't they? They're both mm -hmm. of yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I've just got like, that DNA. I the title. I'm actually um, probably going to jump back into Elden Ring because I've been watching a lot of videos on. Mm -hmm. on and I was just like, oh, I wanna, I wanna see that because I tried. I did try. I got it for the PS4. I did try it um, earlier this year before my move, um, and it was hard. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. like starting area, and I just kept dying over and over to the guys like in the camp oh. in front of one of the gray sides, and I was just like. I am too stupid to play Souls <laughs> games. I can't do this. But I, I've been watching like, you know, like videos on YouTube of other people playing the game and I was just like, oh, but the lore is so fascinating. So, mm -hmm. cool. um, so I'm probably going to give it another go and at, at the point I will like never shut up about it. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I know that... Uh, in the show notes here where I have the question, do you have anything else you'd like to promote? You just said, nope, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But... I, now the thing I am promoting is my book that's coming out in like September, um, on the 22nd of September, I think. Um, 27th of September. What a date. 27th, <laughs> on the 27th of September. September. Do you remember? Uh, <laughs> 
Well, yeah, listeners, um, you have your homework. Go and pre-order the Genesis of Misery from your favorite local independent bookseller, uh, and then pick it up on the twenty seventh of September. Neon, it's been such a joy to have you on the show. Thank you so so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. I, this has been a blast. <laughs> Absolutely. Always happy to have a fellow queer on to talk about just like their book and also just some bullshit. <laughs> I love that. Yes. It's the dream. It's perfect. It's the dream. It's it's honestly the only reason to have a podcast. <laughs> it's a very good reason to. <laughs> yeah. Like who needs any other reasons when you've got such a good one to start with? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you have this podcast. I am so glad. Absolutely. So uh, before we go, Neon, where can our listeners find you elsewhere? I am not on social media much these days, but you can find me on Instagram. Um, it's at it's Neon Young. Um, and that's just me. I update very, very rarely because I keep forgetting that <laughs> social media exists some days, but that's, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Like, honestly, you know, healthy. Off the English countryside and stuff. <laughs> it sounds great. Thank you. Well, listeners, if you're looking for very occasional, beautiful pictures of the English countryside, you know where to find Neon. Listeners, stick around in two weeks' time when I'll be talking to author Amy Kaczynski. Tales from the Trunk is mixed and produced in beautiful Oakland, California. Our theme music is Paper Wings by Lillian Boyd. You can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash trunkcast. All patrons of the show now get a sticker and logo button, along with show outtakes and other content that can't be found anywhere else. You can find the show on Twitter at trunkcast, and I tweet at HB If you like the show, consider taking a moment to rate and review us on your preferred podcast platform. And remember, don't self-reject. 